listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Thanks for joining me for podcast episode 71, Scaling Up with guest Adrian G. Adrian talks about his travel and how the miles, points, credit, and deals game helps him make and save money. Before today's discussion, a quick show note. I'll be hosting monthly meetups in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, with the group Greater Philadelphia Travel, Credit, Miles, and Points. Following a successful trial run in November of 2022, the first monthly meetup will occur on January 8th, 2023. Find more information at meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points. Find a link in the show notes. And here's today's episode with Adrian G. All right. Thank you for coming on the show today, Adrian G. How's it going? All right, going well, going well. Uh, coming into Christmas here, lots of holiday deals, lots of opportunity for applications. It's a good time mm-hmm. to be in miles and points, wrapping up the year-end goals, getting ready for everything to then reset in 2023. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do it all again. I made sure to use up my credits and offers that I had by this year, so I don't have to worry about you know missing out. They're, they're used, so... Oh, yeah. They'll be resetting in January. Yeah, we don't want to see, uh, oh, help, it's two days and I have to use these certain benefits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't do that at the mm-hmm. last minute. Oh, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, people people in Facebook groups will definitely do that. And it's really sad to see people forgetting about it or people procrastinating, whatever it is. But we first met through Facebook messages. I guess you saw some yes, of sir. my posts and you reached out for some advice. I sure did. I used to, I, I, I was listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast couple years ago and that's kind of how i found you from there then on facebook so i'm definitely familiar with your content all right excellent and what were some of the cards that you got so i have cards from all over the spectrum it started off in 2015 with i had a bad credit score and i went for the capital one platinum which is basically their beginner card and slowly from there, it started increasing to the Quicksilver for the 150 sign-up bonus. The Discover It for the 5% categories and $50 for getting the card. After one purchase, you get 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then once I started traveling, I started really learning the benefits of how credit cards can fund your travel and get you to these great destinations at little to no cost, like the Southwest credit cards earning those Southwest uh, rapid rewards points and benefits. And then from there, it just kind of ballooned to where now between me and my wife, we have over 30 different credit cards and we have no plan on stopping. Oh, nice. Yes. The answer to everything is more credit cards and more accounts. (laughs) Absolutely. And it only helps your score. People think that it hurts your score, but it doesn't. Yeah, we might get some temporary fluctuations, little dings here and there for inquiries, but over time you've uh uh some foreshadowing you rode the credit roller coaster and you're still in good shape in the high seven hundreds or maybe even better, I imagine. Yeah, I'm a right around seven ninety in some depending on where you check, it could be over eight hundred, but it's anywhere between like seven ninety to eight thirty. Yeah, and people really stressing, Oh, I want the perfect credit score, but but I've really seen this as a futile effort. Yeah. Yeah, anything over 750 is going to be considered pretty excellent. Yeah, and you're still racking up benefits, sign-up bonuses, all kinds of offers, getting these new cards. So it's not worth just sitting yep. on your hands hoping for the 850 or 840, whatever you're looking for. No, you'll get approved. Yeah, people think, oh, you're going to ruin your credit. But here we are, 30 cards in, still getting approved for cards. <laughs> as long as we're spacing applications, following bank rules, things like that. We're not just firing like 15 applications in one day. You got to play the game and you got to go in with a plan, stick to it, know what you're doing, have an idea of the cards you want right now, the cards you want down the line, because some credit cards, such as the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve, requires a small number of inquiries or new accounts within the last six months, 12 months, and those are cards you have to plan for, and there's ways around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we've applied for a lot of American Express business cards, business cards that keep personal credit clean. And it's usually a soft credit pool rather than a hard inquiry when we get future Amex cards, Amex business cards. Yeah, you don't get the credit inquiry. You don't get the new account 
on your report and you still get to meet a new sign up bonus. So while you're waiting for to go under 524 or to dip under a certain number for a US bank, Amex business cards are the way to go. Yep. And some people might not be all about travel. Some people want to focus on the cashback side. Some people take a hybrid approach. And that's a nice thing about miles and points in that you could choose your own destiny. And in many cases, even cash out points. That's what, what I love about the credit card lifestyle in general is that there's no one right way. It, it, it's situation dependent. Do what's best for you. But do your research. Don't make mistakes. And get the best sign up bonus that you can. Yeah, not one path, but people surely making mistakes, getting really junky cards, and then it's locking them out with other issuers. We're looking mm -hmm. for overall value of cards rather than, oh, I shop at Target, so I'm going to get the Target credit card, or oh, well, I go to Kohl's a lot, so I might as well sign up for an account with them. Like, that's probably not going to be a great way to go, especially early on. Yeah, those store credit cards are never good. Yeah, maybe some maybe some niche plays here and there, but we know with Target, we can get the Target red card debit card. You've signed up for that, right? Yeah, you get that. It's a it doesn't count as a credit card. You still get the 5% back at Target at the store or online, and when they have those offers, you get the $40 um Target coupon. Mhm. Mm yeah, so you're still getting it's the an easy $40. Yeah, 5%, 40 bucks for signing up, maybe get some groceries, new jeans. Lots of options at Target for sure. Absolutely. Yep. And what were some of the trips that you went on? You mentioned uh, Cedar Point was one of your destinations. Speaking of roller yeah, coasters. So, so I've always been a big roller coaster fan growing up. And Cedar Point has always been my destination theme park. And I finally got the chance to visit Cedar Point in 2018. And during that trip, it was my first flight in about 13 years. And we flew with Southwest, and I realized how much fun it is to travel. And during our flight, we saw like an advertisement for the Southwest gift. I'm sorry, Southwest credit card. Spend one thousand, get forty thousand points. Southwest points being worth one point five cents. That's a six hundred dollar sub right there. So when we got back from our trip. That was my first points slash slash miles credit card that I got. Good. So lots of travels to theme parks, lots of hotels, lots of really fancy places, Las Vegas, any different locations? So we did the Cedar Point trip. And when we did that trip, we only did it for a few days. But me and my wife figured, hey, this is the Midwest. There's a lot more parks in the area. Let's plan a trip out here next year and do more. We can do Kings Island. We can go to Kentucky Kingdom. We can go to Holiday World. So we did a week-long trip in 2019 that included Holiday World, Kentucky Kingdom, uh, Kings Island, and topping it off at Cedar Point. And by then, we had acquired enough Southwest points to make the flight for free. And we had some points with my... Capital One Venture that covered the rental car. Oh, nice. Yeah, not as mm -hmm. easy to cover the rental cars with miles and points, although using cards that are giving cash back and just using the cash back to pay for it also works too. Yep. Yep. And you get, I love having the rental car coverage on these credit cards as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Altitude Reserve, for instance, right? Yep, that one gets it primary rental coverage, which is even better because if you are in some sort of accident or fender bender, you don't even need, need to go through your insurance. The credit card counts as the primary coverage. Yeah, I had a friend who had a rental and she got rear-ended in the parking lot of all things. Oh. And she called up and said, hey, I had this issue. And they said, oh, no problem, no problem, we'll cover it. And they completely covered it for her. She didn't have to worry about it. It saved her a lot of time. And that was nice because if you're going to use a debit card for a rental car, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> card, yeah, and a lot of people may not know that the the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the ninety five dollar annual fee card, offers primary rental car coverage, which you wouldn't expect with a ninety five dollar annual fee. Yeah, so lots of different benefits, not just the sign up bonuses, not just the category returns. We're getting a lot mm -hmm. of perks here, and not paying because. 
in many cases, the rental car companies will say, hey, do you want to add on this insurance for an extra 50 bucks, 75 bucks, whatever? Mm -hmm. And we're already, decline, we're already decline. getting that. Yeah. There's no reason to pay that when you use these primary coverage uh, credit cards when you pay for the rental. Yeah, and originally you were hesitant to even get annual fee cards. So what changed that for you? Yep. So during the trip, I realized how easy points are to use with Southwest. Southwest makes it really easy. The points are worth roughly one and a half cents per point. And I just realized I can go on a lot of trips if I have these 40,000, 50,000 points. And that was in 2018 when I really started racking up points and miles credit cards. My second points slash miles credit card was the Capital One Venture, and that was when it had a 50,000-point sign-up bonus after charging $3,000. And since then, we've just been getting mostly points and miles credit cards to where we have, between me and my wife, we have several million points in different accounts. Nice. And yeah, with the annual fee, you'll pay that annual fee on the first statement or after the first month, however you want to phrase it. Mm -hmm. But you're getting that big welcome offer. You're getting all the benefits and you're not locked into yep. it for life. Surely you've nope. canceled some cards or you found ways around the annual fees, right? Yes, I have. When the annual fee comes due, regardless of the card, I always call and ask for a retention because the worst they can say is no. And it only takes a couple minutes. And I can give you an example of a really good retention offer that I got. And I was honestly con going to cancel this card, but I got the Amex Delta Gold, the business credit card. The first year was zero annual fee, but $99 annual fee moving forward starting year two. The annual fee hit for 99 bucks, and I called Amex with the intention of canceling the card, but I asked if they had any retention offer at all, and it wasn't a card that I put really much any spend or activity on at all. But I was shocked when they came back at me and said, go ahead, if you keep the card open, we will give you a $230 credit. Oh, nice. And that was, I never said fast, I never said yes fast enough. <laughs> That's free $124, or $129, and just to keep the card another year. And that's just one example. Yeah, usually I recommend or make the bank call when you're prepping lunch, when you're driving, something like that, rather than just yep. like sitting and only being on the phone. It's like 10 minutes that possibly doesn't pan out for you. So trying to multitask with some of these bank calls or some people use online chat feature, but personally I like calling in and multitasking while yeah, I'm doing other things. Yeah, I like calling things. in for that personal experience because I find I get better luck over, over the phone. And I do it during, you know, my commute to work when I have a 30-minute commute in the morning and, a, you know, a 30-minute commute on the way home. And those are good times to make those retention calls. Yeah, but with some of these cards, you've canceled or maybe you've product changed them as well to no annual fee cards after year one? Yeah. One card that I did cancel was the Barclays Business Aviator, which was a $99 annual fee. I really had no reason to keep it another year, so I did cancel that one. A card that we did downgrade my for my wife, she has the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and we tried calling a couple times asking for retentions with no luck, so we went ahead and downgraded that to the Chase Freedom Flex. Oh, good. So you got the 5X rotating categories as well that will also work with Ultimate Rewards since you could transfer points in the same household. Yeah, very good. And and how was it adding your wife to the game? Was she very enthusiastic about this at first? Was it a difficult sell? How did that go? It just took me showing her on the computer how much points I was earning. And once she saw how we can go on these trips just using points and miles, she was game. She was down. And what makes it great having my wife in this credit card journey with me, she's my person too also known as my P2 in the community, is that we can use each other for referrals. Because you can't refer yourself, obviously, but you can refer your spouse, and your spouse can refer you. And with two people trying to meet a minimum spend, it makes meeting that spend that much easier. Yeah, you can use uh, different types of mobile pay, add the card in there. 
I usually don't recommend that people have authorized users unless there are significant benefits from being an authorized user because it's usually best to just double dip. You get the card, she gets the card kind of thing. I agree. I don't add her as an authorized user, but for some of the business credit cards, I do add her just so she has her own copy of the card. Yeah, and the Altitude Reserve card with U.S. Bank is particularly interesting because that's just used for mobile pay getting 3x or 4.5% back. So some people are intimidated or confused about which card do I use where, but hey, if you're using mobile pay, it's 4.5%, you're not really going too wrong with that. That's, and that's one of the reasons I love the Altitude Reserve. That was a card that was always on my radar for the longest time, but I knew that U.S. Bank had strict requirements. You needed to have a U.S. Bank relationship, and you needed to have low inquiries and new accounts within the last 12 months. So I played it safe, made sure my inquiries were low. We had a U.S. Bank checking account through them because we got the $400 U.S. Bank checking account bonus. Oh, good, good. So we were U.S. Bank customers, and I applied for the Altitude Reserve, and I wanted to use a referral link, but the Altitude Reserve does not do referral links. Yeah, please, uh, please, U.S. Bank, if you want to give us some money for promoting your products, we're happy to take it. <laughs> because I, that's a card that I love, would love to recommend. And so that's a card that's one of those high-dollar annual fee cards that's a keeper. Because even though it has the $400 annual fee, the annual fee is technically $75. Mm-hmm. Because every year you get $300.25 credit to use on any travel purchase or any food purchase. Super easy. Which, that's the easiest credit to hit. It just is. So I have that card. My wife has that card. And we add it to the Apple Pay because we never use the physical card. We always use the Apple Pay for that because you get the 3x. Points are worth one and a half cents it's making each purchase worth four and a half percent yes america america loves math but that's a pretty easy one there <laughs> we get the 400 Very. minus 325 equals 75 but with the benefits yep. with the 3x or 4.5 percent, i think it's extremely easy to overcome that and they've been generous with me yeah. giving retention offers as well mm-hmm. every year calling in mm-hmm. it will give you ten thousand points oh perfect so that's a net net negative annual fee yeah, that's exactly what I got. I called them about two months ago when my annual fee hit. They gave me ten thousand dollars. Sorry, oh, ten thousand nice. points <laughs> on my very first call. Ten thousand points. You hit the U.S. Now, bank like, lottery. Cool. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. But that ten thousand points is worth one fifty, and that, along with the credits, they're essentially giving me seventy five dollars to keep the the card which I was going to keep anyways. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely good calling in and they're happy to keep you as a customer because they're making some Mm -hmm. money on the interchange fees, right? Like they're giving us some rewards, but they're making some money. Unfortunately, a lot of people out there are getting into debt and paying interest, but that's not something that we're saying. Be very, very responsible and organized with this game because that's the only way to win. Yes, if you're paying interest on credit cards, you're doing it wrong because interest rates are high. And you're go- that really defeats the purpose. Yes. And we're not just going and overspending on all these random things to hit the spend goals, the welcome offers, the retention offers, anything like that. How are you reaching the spend goals? Many people are intimidated by this. How am I going to spend $3,000 in 90 days? I can't possibly see that. And you know what? Early on, when I was getting some of these cards, like the Amex Platinum, and it was five spend five thousand in three months i honestly thought that's a lot of spend i don't know if i'm gonna be able to reach that but with everyday purchases for me and my wife we found that meeting that spend was pretty easy and we we met that spend in about two months and we put every purchase on it our phone bills our auto insurance sometimes we'll pay our auto insurance for up to six months oh, that's a good one yep Mm-hmm. And we do a family plan with our phone, and my brother is out of my on our plan, and I'm happy to have him Venmo me his portion of the bill, and I'll gladly use the credit card oh, to nice. pay that bill. 
And that's just some one example. We every purchase on gas, groceries, every time we go out, anytime I need to purchase stuff online, it's always put it on the credit card. Whatever sign up bonus we're currently trying to meet, we put everything on that card. And in the rare instance where we're not working on a sign up bonus, then we go to category spend. We look at all our cards and we figure, okay, if we're gonna go spend money at a restaurant, maybe we'll use the Amex Gold for the four X. Maybe we'll use the Apple Pay on the altitude reserve for the four and a half percent. And if we're say it's a gas purchase and the discover currently would be at the five percent for gas, we use that. So if we're not working on a sub we choose whatever card gets us the most return for that exact purchase. Yeah, and if you have a really high amount of spend, especially if you're engaging in creative spending, reselling, you can mm-hmm. target those category bonuses and just put the non-bonus spend or unbonus spend on the newer cards. But that's depending on your situation, how much you're spending. For instance, if you're going to have, or sorry, if you have the Amex Gold for 4X, or the altitude reserve for 3x or 4.5, then maybe you always use that for dining rather than a brand new card that's only giving you 1x. Yes. And if there's certain categories that don't fall in any certain category, then I usually will go with my Capital One Venture because it's a straight two points per dollar, and those points are worth one cent, making it pretty much a 2% card on anything. Yeah. Yeah, or the altitude reserve if you can use mobile pay. And that's been really... Yeah, if I can use mobile pay. Yeah, yes. that's been really interesting because my dentist recently incorporated mobile pay. Like, oh, wow, what a dream. I asked for it and there it was a few months later. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if my vote made a difference, but... <laughs> Your dentist had you smiling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the war on happiness was not in the room that day. They're like, yeah, oh, if, I, if I got a few hundred to spend here, I might as well just use my watch to pay. This is... This is yep. this is really good. Any creative spend on your end? Any kind of reselling? Any kind of business expenses? Anything? Yeah, for for eBay, sometimes I'll buy some Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards that I sell, and I'll buy cards. And I actually haven't been selling them. I'll kind of buy them right now and hold because the value of these cards keep keeps going up. So if I'm looking to buy a few hundred dollars worth of cards. I'll put it on the altitude reserve if it's mobile pay or if I'm reading, trying to meet a sign up bonus. But I also collect, I like golf and I love TaylorMade. And TaylorMade releases these exclusive head covers that sell out within oh, a few yeah. hours. Yep. And I have about 50 of these head covers. And when they come out, they sell for about $80 on the TaylorMade website. But you can resell them on eBay for anywhere from one twenty to one fifty. One of them was a Cinnamon Toast Crunch limited cover that <laughs> I sold. I bought two of them and I sold one of them for three hundred, and I sold the other one for four fifty. Oh, nice, nice, a big win there. Yeah, and uh, I've seen a lot of Playstations and Xboxes doing really well, though the market on that has dropped. At least it's not the same it was a few months ago. But yeah, there's still some possibilities there. It's crazy with like a PS5. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so some creative spend can definitely move the needle or maybe with family members, like you said, with a phone plan or, oh, my grandma has to make this bigger purchase or she has to replace her furnace or whatever. Hey, can you just use the card, my card and give me cash kind of thing? I've I've had some guests who said things like that. I've done that as well. My family needed to make purchase and I said, hey, can you just give me cash and let me charge it on my card? Because... You're going to pay cash for this anyways. Let me just charge it, meet that, help me meet some spend. And it just gets me that much closer to hitting that sign-up bonus. Because as soon as I meet that sign-up bonus, I can go on to my next card. Nice. And I've talked about travel with previous guests to Las Vegas. You've also gone to Las Vegas. This is a very popular oh, destination. Justin, at Miles Las and Vegas is the best. And you, you go there a lot. Because I remember yeah, over yeah. the summer especially, you were there quite a bit. So I have the Amex Platinum, and it comes with the $200 Amex Fine Hotels and Resorts. And that credit, I want to say, is still somewhat new. And I live in Northern California near Sacramento, and there's nowhere really around here other than, like, San Francisco 
where that Amex FHR, um, either it's called the hotel collection or the fine hotels and resorts, but every year, and it goes by calendar year. So it resets January 1st, all the way through December 31st. And it was closing, it was closed, you know, this was in October and my wife and I were thinking we haven't gone to Vegas this year. We still had her $250 Amex uh, Hilton Aspire Resort credit to use. She had two Hilton hotel certificates to use. And I still had the Amex $200 fine hotels and resort credit to use. Hmm. So we went ahead and planned a trip. And we figured we're going to do some hotel hopping. Try out some different hotels. We can Uber around one of them we were able to walk but when we made it essentially a very free luxurious trip in some of the nicest hotels in las vegas we stayed at the hilton Ilara, and for that hotel it was around 240 dollars cash so we went ahead and used the hilton aspire credit card on that and that wiped off the resort uh, $250 resort oh, nice. uh, credit that we used. And while we were there, we had some free time, so we did one of those timeshare tours. Oh, Hilton Grand Vacations. We, <laughs> yes. We got $150 for doing that. Nice. So about $75 an hour sitting through the presentation and just saying no at the end. Exactly. And when they said, what's your credit score? We told them, we actually showed them our credit card. We were like 790. And then they lit up thinking that they had a sale. Uh, <laughs> we we just, we knew, hey, we just want, you know, we're, we're trying to get a nice dinner out of this. So we got a $150 gift card. So oh, interesting. that was great. Yeah, when, when I've gone out there, I pre-planned it with Hilton Grand Vacations where it was pay like $200 up front to get mm -hmm. three nights and then we'll refund you the money and give you bonus Hilton points. Yeah. So that's another option too, for people who can do it in advance. Mm -hmm. Cause they also gave us points just for doing it as well. I think they gave my wife about either 500 or a thousand points, which isn't much, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. And with the Hilton diamond status, they usually give more, maybe like 30,000, 40,000, sometimes even higher than that, or a $150 oh. certificate for a future stay. Nice. And my wife is a Hilton Diamond because that status comes automatically with the Hilton Aspire. Nice. So lots to do in Vegas, not just a gambling destination, oh, yeah. a lot more going on there. We really don't do a whole lot of the gambling. We just kind of go hang out, watch football. So we did the Hilton Alara that first night. Then the second two nights, which is a Friday and Saturday, we, went, we walked across the street and we stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. And we used my wife's two Hilton certificates that one of them had been extended through COVID and was expiring at the end of the year. And the other one was expiring sometime next year. But we're, we figured, let's just go ahead and use them. And if we had paid the dollar amount, it would have been <laughs> around $600 a night. Yep. So we got $1,200 in value. It came with like free breakfast or... Instead of free breakfast, I think Hilton does like food credit up to a certain amount per day. Yeah, it's great. A lot of people will say, oh, I couldn't afford that. That's too expensive. You have to be rich in order to do these things. But we're constantly saying, no, no, <laughs> it's not true. Fake news. <laughs> no, I'm not rich for anything. <laughs> but if I'm patient and smart with my credit card decisions, we could act rich. Yeah, and it's some organization, it's some keeping up with things. So what I would say to people, start very small, get the one card to start with, and if you're comfortable with it, scale up in time. Have, have you found that difficult? Has it been so much of a Herculean effort? People are saying, oh, how many hours do you have to spend a week doing this stuff? It can't possibly be worth it. It sounds like too much work. Here's the thing. I actually enjoy looking up my different credit cards every week, seeing looking through all my annex offers and seeing what's available. I, I get enjoyment out of it. I don't feel frustrated or overwhelmed or spend too much time on it. And I think with when people get in this hobby, they, they learn to love it. 
and it doesn't become it doesn't feel like work yeah it's, it feels like enjoyment satisfaction yeah, it's a fun game in many ways to me try, trying to min max trying to optimize these rewards trying to figure out the puzzle of how do i use this benefit what's the best way i can do this or seeing some offers that are just like super free money like last week Kohl's was offering $20 off a $100 purchase. I went in and bought $100 Amazon gift card. I had that offer four times on different Chase cards. That is amazing. So that was $80 free money, and I've already spent the Amazon money just buying things for reselling purposes and personal use. Yeah. And another thing is with Amazon, a lot of these credit cards will offer if you points that you can use on Amazon. You can use Chase points discover uh, cash back you can use capital one points or you can use amex points and sometimes there will be targeted offers for example um, about a month ago i had an offer with amex on amazon that said use an american express point at least one amex point get 40 percent off up to 60 dollars wow, so nice. I knew that I wanted the AirPods Pro 2, and they were on sale for Black Friday for $199. Mm -hmm. So I got the AirPods Pro 2 with that offer for about $140 after the, the discount yeah. from, from the Black Friday sale and the offer of the $60 back, 40% off. Yeah, really good. Which so is fantastic. The saving money in that case is like making money because it was a product that you wanted to buy anyway, and they're just giving you this discount. It, it was a product that I was planning on purchasing regardless. I was just waiting for the right opportunity, and that that was the perfect opportunity for that. Yeah, it seems strange to me as when I started picking this hobby up and telling other people about it, people have been really reluctant that they don't want to play the game. Or they don't follow the suggestions and just sign up for random cards. Uh, and it just like when 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 I have friends who who tell me I just applied for this Marriott Chase Bonvoy card, and I tell them congratulations. But if they had came to me first, I could have used uh, given them my referral link, and I could have gotten some referral points from it and maybe gave them a gift card for using my link. Yeah. yeah and I'm always happy to, happy to provide some advice and suggestions and creative tricks uh, for people who do use the links. And I said, look, you use it. I'll support you here. You know, I'll explain this thing or here's some ways to scale up. So it's nice. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, I think, a really cool thing about this hobby is that there are a lot of really helpful people and amazing websites like Doctor of Credit, GC Galore, Frequent Miler, and a lot of this information is out there. And it's free. It's free credit. And there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And there's resources out there. And for me personally, like at my work, I will help people. And it's not like, oh, I say, give me $20 and I'll help you. I do it for free because I enjoy it. I'm passionate about it. I want to help them. Even if they don't end up using my referral link, the satisfaction knowing that they're getting a great offer or getting into the credit card hobby makes me makes me satisfied. Yeah, a lot of benefits to be had from this as long as you could be responsible, as long as you're managing these things. I usually recommend sign into your accounts once per week, see if there's a payment due, make sure to pay it off. Uh, the current statement balance or maybe you want to pay it in full depending on what you want to do but I'm usually always just paying the statement balance about a week before it's due make sure the payments processed everything is good and it's it's not too difficult to manage you don't have to be some super computer no. to to do all of this it's it's really not that hard that people are making it out to it's me. not hard at all because with say you have several Amex cards you can look at them all together on the Amex app mm -hmm. or website they're all right there. Same with Chase. Same with Capital One. It's not like you have to log into every single credit card individually. It makes it's really easy and it's not time consuming. It's not difficult. And that's a misconception that people think, oh, I'll get lost. I I won't know how to manage it. Well, you can set up auto pay, stuff like that, that'll make sure you don't miss a payment because the worst thing you can do is miss a payment and then you get dinged with a late payment on your credit report 
that is the absolute worst thing you can do. Yeah. And I make sure to let everyone know, at least make the minimum payment. Do not let a payment go unpaid. Yeah, and even starting with some lower hanging fruit, like we mentioned, the target red card offer when that's mm -hmm. a thing. Oh, opening a checking account, as we mentioned, hey, switch your direct deposit to this bank and they'll give you $300. And maybe yep. you have to swipe a debit card five or 10 times, like no big deal. Really, really low hanging fruit. And I had thought that especially people who are working like low paying jobs, maybe entry level jobs, minimum wage jobs, it's like, wow, this can be quite a boon for you. This can be a lot more appealing to say that kind of worker versus someone who's already making like six figures or more. But even I, I've talked to people who have lots of money who do this hobby as well, and they find value in it. So this business of, oh, I make too much money, this isn't worth it. Or some people spread this, oh, this is just like extreme couponing. I don't want anything to do with couponing. Like, no, 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 we're, we're crushing the extreme couponers. <laughs> it's so much easier and it's so much fun. It really is learning about all the new offers and deals coming around. Yeah, and extreme couponing isn't going to get you a, a free stay at Win Las Vegas or comp stay at Win Las Vegas or Alara or some of these Ooh. other wild destinations. So speaking of the win, so our Vegas trip, the very last night we did, um, I had the $200 Amex fine hotels and resorts still to use. And I was looking at the hotels and it was down between the Bellagio the Cosmo or the Wynn slash Encore because they were all right around the same price, right around 190 for that last night. Oh, perfect. And after resort fees and whatnot, it'd be like, say, 240 Yep. So essentially paid $40 because I get that $200 back. So we went ahead and chose Encore because I heard a lot of great things about it. And it was a fantastic choice because that was a very nice hotel. We got the 60th 60th floor which is a nice big suite one room below the very top also if you use the fine hotels and resorts you get early check-in and late checkout so we were able to check in around noon we checked out we could check out as late as four and we also get free breakfast up to i believe like 60 dollars and it came with a $100 spa credit because every FHR stay gives you a $100 credit either to be used on spa or food and beverage. But when we called the spa, they had no openings available. So we went, we called the front desk and said, we wanted to use the spa credit. It's unavailable. Can you change it to food and beverage credit? Which they happily did. And oh, nice. my wife had a great, we had a great dinner. Yeah, maybe even better as the spa prices can be really expensive. They even wanted something oh, yeah. like eighty five dollars for a buzz cut at the barber shop. We, we did. We had no intention of wanting to use the spa. So when they said they had no openings, I was kind of, you know, high fiving my wife because I was telling her, "Hey, they'll probably give us the food and beverage credit." <laughs> yeah, or, or with um, the Rona, let's say they had closed that area and they were giving people credits for some time. So that, that worked out in some ways for people in yeah. the past. And there's so many uh, dining options there, which you can't go wrong. There was a lot of good ones. They, they have a great buffet, but the buffet, if you go to win or slash encore, make a reservation because that buffet line was very long. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've gone to Red 8, Wazuzu. Those are really good options. And they have lots of vegan and vegetarian options, too, which is nice okay. for people. As some places you go, there aren't as many options or you're just stuck with appetizers and salads. So Las Vegas has really stepped up and Wynn in particular has been really good for those options. I, I really like Lemongrass yeah. at Aria, the Thai restaurant out there as well with MGM, using some of the My Vegas rewards, using some MGM comps, a lot of really yeah. good options. And and we we love the Cosmo. We did the Cosmo last year for the two hundred dollars FHR credit, and I wanted to use it again there. But I also wanted to check out the win, and I'm glad we did because I'm we're the kind of people who want to try all the different hotels if we can to kind of see what they're all like and for future visits and know hey we really like this hotel we'll make sure to go there again. So give places a chance. Yeah, have some diversity you might and be surprised. not break the bank in the meantime if all the prices are about the same. So that's really good. Exactly. It was a free trip. 
Yeah. Yeah, we had to pay a few dollars over the credits, but but the we used Uber to get around, and we had a bunch of Uber credits from my wife's uh, Amex Gold, my Amex Gold, and my Amex Platinum. And when you stay at the Wardorf Astoria, they actually pay for you to use a lift up to three miles. So that's how we were able to oh, get from there okay. to the to the encore on our last night. Ah, then that'd be a great thing to ask if they're still honoring that. Maybe that was a limited time thing. I don't know. But if they're going to honor that in the future, that'd be awesome. I'll be back in January of 2023 to use a lot of my credits as the year begins and get out of the cold and snow of Pennsylvania. <laughs> so it should be oh, should be interesting. Yeah. All right. We've talked about some reasons that people might not want to play the game, dispelling some rumors. What do you have to say about the critics of Miles and Points? Dave Ramsey being the uh, leader of the war on happiness, of course. Oh, that Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey wants you to pay cash for everything. He wants you to use debit card for everything. And for some people, okay, they can't manage a credit card because they're irresponsible. I get it. But using a debit card comes with a risk. You're more at risk to get um, your information hacked and if you were to like rent rent a car through a rental car uh, agency or book a hotel room and you had to put the deposit on your debit card there that co- money's coming out of your account for a few days and if you only have a few hundred dollars in your checking account well now what does that do you don't have money to spend Whereas with a credit card, you just go ahead, put whatever deposit you need. It's coming back, and it's not anything that I have to worry about. Mm-hmm. You get more consumer protections using credit cards. If there's fraud, it's easier to to dispute, and you get better customer service. You really do. There's just so much more benefits. And with debit cards, you don't earn anything on your purchases even on your basic of credit cards, say, gets you 1% on anything, that's still better than nothing. Yeah, and it can add up over time, especially with those larger purchases. And, you know, Dave's game to try to limit credit cards is, oh, you'd have to spend $100,000 on a Discover card to get 1000 bucks. But, of course, nobody in miles and points is going to suggest that you spend $100,000 on a 1% card because we're saying get multiple nobody cards. Nobody will. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they're spending a hundred thousand dollars, they're already in the Amex Platinum range kind of card. They're not on the Discover card. <laughs> For Dave to say something like that, it just shows that he's ignorant. It just does. Yeah, it, it would be like sitting down at a blackjack table, and no matter what you get, mm-hmm. you're going to double down on everything. And then, oh, blackjack's a terrible game. Why would anyone play it? Like, well, your strategy was bad. That was the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a better no, way to play doing. this game. Yeah, so with the credit cards, yeah, if you could be responsible, you can be organized. I don't think it's such a hard task to do that. Maybe with some people, they can't and they shouldn't play the game. But to say that, oh, it's all a waste of time, you're going to lose, yeah. you're going to overspend, you can't control yourself, like all this hype that Dave Ramsey puts out is is really it's, wild. It's, it's insane. And I actually joined the Dave Ramsey group on Facebook just to see the <laughs> nonsense on there. I'm kind of the background lurker just thinking, wow, these people just, man, if only they can get a credit card. Because, and also Dave Ramsey swears by using cash. Do you know how much time consuming it is to use cash like at a drive through You have to give them the $20 bill. You have to wait for them to break it. You have to wait for them to give you the cash. And then they give you the coins. That, that can be all done in seconds by swiping or inserting your credit card it's just cat and then you're slowing down all the cars behind you waiting for your cash breaking a bill and it's kind of rude by doing that in my opinion yeah and at hotels uh it might be quite complicated to give a cash deposit as some sort of security or incidental hold <laughs> exactly and you're exactly you're, you're floating because... that too as as you mentioned before you're possibly overdrafting that checking account as well so a lot of weird a lot of weird things can happen using cash and debit i'm, I'm almost only using cash for poker and maybe some yeah, some other things where i only can use cash. Poker table. yeah yeah i I, yeah. I yearn for that future i really do but uh we're not do you we're think not that future is coming yet. 
<laughs> uh, maybe so, because I can play online blackjack and fund that with prepaid debit cards and gift cards. So oh, nice. that's really nice, as I've talked about that before, having an advantage through playing online blackjack, getting the site bonuses, promotions, and in many cases, promotions involving the gift cards and prepaid cards. There was a previous week yeah. we were talking before the show. Unfortunately, you don't have this in your area, but I was getting 5x points at giant grocery stores. So I was giving yeah. at least 5% back in groceries and more for gas. Mm -hmm. So using the card, giving up about a half percent at blackjack, playing basic strategy is just amazing to use credit to fund that and just make Absolutely. bank. Absolutely. Just Absolutely. saying to my budget is that I could just erase this one expense every month thanks mm -hmm. to deals, at least when that deal comes around. And some others will give a significant discount as well, just finding some arbitrage opportunities. I, when, when Dave says cash is key, it's not. Credit is key <laughs> yep. because by having credit cards, you build a credit score, you build a credit por portfolio. And when you go to purchase a house, purchase a car, and you don't have that credit history, that's going to open a whole can of worms of problems to get you approved. It just is. Yeah. And maybe Dave has a lot of the money behind that he could flow, that he could buy whatever he wants. But a lot of people in his audience and a lot of people in general don't have tons of money behind. So using credit, leveraging credit, having other options and being responsible with it. And th those are the people who can probably benefit from credit cards to get that credit score up, to get better interest rates and whatnot. Dave recently said, quote, a debit card has the exact same protections for fraud that a credit card has. And quote, it may take a day or two to resolve disputes with credit card fraud. So it, it's just a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of times your money yeah, can be held up for weeks. way more than a day or two. Yeah, yeah, really, really messy stuff. And he, he talks about playing around with debt. He said, quote, I'm not going to make the mistake of playing around with debt ever again. Are we playing around with debt? Are we going into debt? Like, what? No. what is this? <laughs> maybe, maybe he made bad decisions with his credit cards, but... It, since we're adults and are accountable for our actions and purchases, we know better. We know not to mess around and purchase what you know you can afford, what you can pay back. Don't run a balance. Don't go into bankruptcy like Dave has. So it's just, yeah, all that bad information. Yeah, yeah. Don't go out there and just speculate on some random cryptocurrency and then, okay, the bills are due for your credit cards and you can't pay it because the bank man took your money uh, <laughs> in the Bahamas yes. or wherever he happens to be oh now, right? Yeah. Like, okay, don't don't go on the super risky side with this. And no, yeah, there, there might be not. some debt was we owe money, but that's just a temporary thing. At worst, maybe 30 to 60 days where we're not paying interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not only are we borrowing money for... 30, 60 days, we're also earning points, rewards, cash back on those purchases that we would have made anyways. Yep. Yeah. So some extra money, some gravy on top of that. Exactly. And a lot of credit cards will have, for example, some hotel credit cards like the Hyatt. If you charge 15000 within, say, if you charge a certain amount, you'll get a free hotel certificate. And that hotel night can be worth anywhere from a $100 hotel night up to $300 hotel night. It's all dependent on how you want to use it. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of options. And when we're playing with points, we can have opportunities where we're getting increased value. Whereas with cash, mm -hmm. that's usually not the case. That You're going to a hotel during a popular event. You're probably mm -hmm. going to have to pay a higher rate. But if we have a certificate that just gives yes. us a free night, then it doesn't matter what... Mm -hmm event might be going on in that area we can still get the hotel anyway and dave ramsey also oh exactly. you won't be able to find availability blackout dates blah 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 well we won't get exactly everything we look for and in some cases yeah. with cash the rates are going to be extremely high as mm -hmm. well but and then you're going to put that we plan ahead large deposit or hold and if you're paying cash for hotels you're probably not a hotel loyalty member so you don't get all the benefits that come with that which there's so much benefits just from even being like a mid-level, mid-level uh, hotel member. Yep. It, it, there's just the, the benefits 
just are so significant that I don't, I really wish more people could understand this, learn from this, and get these same benefits that, that we get. Yeah, and it's it, really, really it, life-changing. It is, because it allows me and my wife to travel to all these destinations that we've always wanted to go, and that we wouldn't have been able to go if we didn't have all these points and miles. Right. Yeah, it would it's maybe just... be like one trip a year or every few years mm -hmm. otherwise. And now we can go several times a year. Mm -hmm. And every year we keep getting more points and benefits and credits. Like, for example, the MX Platinum card. You get every year a $200 slight incidental credit. But there is a bit of a trick that you can use if you book like a uh, Southwest flight and your South Southwest is your chosen. If Southwest is your preferred airline with American Express Platinum and you book a $99 flight, you will get that $99 credited back. And then once that happens, you cancel that flight and that $99 gets added to your travel bank that you have one year to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or just and take the twice, or just take the flight originally. But that tactic works True. pretty or, well too. Or just yeah, book a flight for ninety nine dollars that you're gonna take anyways. So that's just every year two hundred dollars, and it resets in January. And another card that is somewhat similar is the Chase Ritz Carlton credit card. You get a three hundred dollar flight incidentals. And this one's a little weird to use because you can't go, you don't just charge it and get the credit immediately. You have to charge it, wait for it to hit your account, and then you have to call Chase and ask them to use that flight incidentals on that charge. And they will credit, they will go ahead and refund that charge as the credit and apply it towards your $300 flight credit per year. And I usually book, um, purchase. $150 gift card for Southwest twice. Yeah, not bad. And it's pretty easy to manage it. You don't have breakage. Yeah, the, the, the gift card does not um, expire. If I don't think I'm going to use it anytime soon, I can always sell it or gift it. There's so much you can do with it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good thinking. So we're trying to find creative ways to use a lot of the benefits and it's not extremely obscure. It's not so difficult, right? <laughs> Just no. some little things that you learn along the way or some experiments you try. Maybe some things work that you didn't anticipate. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm able to use credit cards to pay for my laundry, which has some sort of app attached to it. And one time when I used really? an Amex card, it triggered a shop small offer where it was giving, a, oh, I think it was like $5 back on a purchase of $10 or more. So I just loaded the laundry yeah. account and used all those credits. So that was really easy versus some people going to some wine and spirit stores that may or may not have mm -hmm. coded or some sort of local grocery stores that may or may not have coded. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like if I'm going to be at a grocery store anyway, then I'll try. If it works, it works. If not, then okay, I just try something else. So not a big deal. I'm not suggesting taking a 20 minute detour to try to save two bucks. That's not going to make sense. No, it takes a yeah. matter of two minutes. It, it, it's it's nothing. Yeah. And with American Express, they have sometimes you never know the kind of offers that they that that they have. Yeah, yeah, really easy money. Or recently I went to Lowe's, it was $50 off or $50 back on a $250 purchase and lots of oh, gift cards that's there 20%. too. That's so, 20%. Yeah, that's so 20%. It's really, really easy money, whether you're just getting Amazon gift cards or other brands that are high value brands. So yep. yeah, lots of opportunity if you're looking out for it. The Amex Platinum uh, this, within the last month had a Walmart offer. Spend 40, get back 10. Yeah. Yeah, easy money. Easy there. to use. Easy money. You get the Walmart Plus with the um, Amex Platinum. And the Walmart Plus, it's good. You get the free two day shipping. And it's not something that I would probably purchase. I, I probably wouldn't purchase it if I had paid the full dollar. But because it's offered as a free benefit from my Amex Platinum, might as well get it because there might be some times where I use it. Yeah, why not? All right, very good. We're coming 
coming towards the end here. Do you have yeah. cards in mind for 2023? Currently, the card that I got recently is the Chase Ink Unlimited because it current. I don't know if this offer is still out there, but all their ink cards had a historic offer. Spend sixty, sorry, spend six thousand dollars, get ninety thousand points or nine hundred dollars cash back. Yeah, which is amazing, amazing. That's before that for the longest time it was spend seven thousand five hundred, get seventy five thousand points or seven hundred and fifty dollars. And they're actually say you got the card a month ago for the seventy five thousand point after charging seven thousand five hundred. If you call Chase and ask them to match you, match you to the new offer, I've been hearing good results of people who have asked and Chase has matched the new offer because not only is it more points, it's less minimum spend. Oh, nice. Yep, so yeah. so what's coming up? More Chase Inc. cards? More Chase business cards? Yeah, possibly another Chase business card. The Inc. What is it? The Priority or the... Oh, the Inc. Preferred or the Chase Inc. Cash? Inc. Preferred. Yeah, Inc. Preferred. I might be going for the Inc. Preferred. Or my wife may go for the for the Capital One Venture because my referral gets me 20,000 points. And the sign-up bonus is 75,000 points after charging 4,000. Okay. I want to say it's 4,000. So that's essentially, with the referral and the sub, that's 95,000 points. And the spend, say, and the spend. Yep. Yeah, can, it's a really big bonus. That's easily 100,000 points, 1,000 bucks. And every year when my annual fee hits on that card, I call Capital One and they always waive that annual fee. All right, very good, and hopefully some more American Express. Have you been getting the mailers for the no lifetime language offers? What's that been looking like? Um, I haven't gotten any mailers recently, but I'll definitely be on the lookout for those. But my wife does not have the platinum yet, so we might go for that platinum for her. And if we do, it won't be until the later part of 2023 because she can use the credits towards the end of the year, and the credits will reset. Yep. At the beginning of 2024. Yeah, November, December, usually the best time to apply for the platinum cards. Exactly, exactly. You get you just get the more, more benefits that way. Yeah, you're paying one annual fee, but you're getting the December benefits for that calendar year, the next year's benefits, and then another calendar year. So it's it's really wild. Any trips possibly coming in 2023? We plan on doing Las Vegas again possibly in february and by then our credits and our hilton credit or sorry our hilton hotel credit should reset the 200 dollars amex mhr credit should will reset on january 1st we have plenty of southwest gift cards and points so we'll probably do vegas we want to do the midwest sometime in spring early summer of 2023 to do Kings Island, Cedar Point, Kentucky Kingdom, and possibly do another trip to Florida and do Busch Gardens, Tampa, do the parks in Orlando, like Universal, SeaWorld, the fun spot parks. There's just, the possibilities are really endless. Oh, nice. And maybe another Hilton Grand Vacations plan for Florida. Is that something I did in the past yeah. going to Disney? That was another three-night offer for close to $200 that was later refunded, plus some Hilton points. Oh, that would be great. But also, if we wanted to stay at the Double Tree right there, right next to the SeaWorld, that is classified as a resort. So the $250 Hilton Resort would work there as well oh nice and there could possibly be overlap with the hilton grand vacation stay at a resort so that's a possibility too if that if the stars Ooh. line up on that although for me i had yeah. to call amex because the resort credit didn't automatically apply it was coded as a marketing okay. stay but amex oh. gave me the the money anyway so that worked the out. resort 
Yeah. Okay. Although that's that's a little bit on the edge there because maybe it doesn't work out. And oh god, we spent an extra seventy five dollars at the gift shop just to maximize the two fifty, and then like you end up paying for it all. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> buy, beware on that one. You know, gamer might get yeah. gamed sometimes, but hey, even if we take little L's, we're still way up in the long run. Because it's not like you wasted seventy five dollars; you still bought something. <laughs> yeah, hopefully <laughs> you, know, uh, you it use it for good. Probably something you wouldn't buy. Yeah, I went to Hilton Doubletree in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at a resort mm-hmm. there, and I added some items at the gift shop on the way out, and everything worked out for that. I got a Doubletree hat and a tumbler, so why <laughs> why not get some extra things? It was like breakfast was free. Breakfast was covered as a Diamond member, so what am I going to yeah. spend this on? Um, oh, look, there was a giant right across the street, and I just used grocery points. It's, it's all good, guys. We got it covered. That's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. And the possibilities are endless. My advice to anyone, just do a little bit of research. Don't don't listen to Dave Ramsey and realize that if you want to travel and you have everyday purchases that you can meet these minimum spends for these sign-up bonuses, do it. But reach out to someone who has a referral offer because you can help out your friend, your family if they have a link. And sometimes their referral uh, links can offer you even a better sub, depending on the card you're going for. Yeah, I got really desperate as I was running low on cards after an application spree, and I ended up getting the American Express Plum card. So using a referral <laughs> link gave me a $600 welcome offer compared yeah. to the public offer that is zero. So I, I picked up an extra 600 bucks with the Plum card as I had a lot yep. of spend coming up. So I was able to do it. It was a bit of a slog, but I'll take the six hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, American Express. We love the Plum Card. We really do. Uh, certainly not one of those the first who, cards the, I'd the, recommend. The five people who have it, <laughs> yeah, card yeah, yeah. Have, like, at all. Yeah, I called in. <laughs> they should rebrand it. Yeah, I called in asking a question about the card after I got it, and the the rep on the phone said, "I love when my Plum Card holders get the early pay discount." Like, yeah, how many are there? Like the business green is also pretty lackluster, but at least there's a welcome offer with that as well. Yep, yep. Just just do your just do your research. Yeah, you you would definitely want to be careful and get good cards rather than cards that aren't going to do much for you. What the Starbucks Chase card? Um, get some like uh, Credit One cards that are advertised a lot. Oh, those avoid not... those Credit One cards. There's not a single good one. They'll send you mailers. You might think you're approved. You might think it's a good deal. Throw those in the trash. Yeah, yeah, we might find some good things in the mail, but I think that's a mistake that people make is, oh, well, my local random bank gave me an invitation to apply for a card, so I just took it. They gave me $50, maybe. Like, well, I, I don't really think that one was worth it. We could have done a lot better than that. Offer for, for my friends when they apply for a new card, I say, congratulations on getting this new card. Now, in the future, if you are looking for a new card, don't be impulsive don't pull the trigger come reach out to me first let me see what i can find for you and let me give you some advice yeah it's like i have some friends who know about auto mechanics i have some legal friends and if i have those kind of questions i call them and say hey what do you think about the situation rather than me just going rogue and making possible bad decisions like we don't realize what we don't know right there there's some finer points about this game so instead of going on a spree and getting these bad cards and locking yourself out from getting really good cards it's it's important yep. to be strategic about this do things in a proper order do things right or some people getting declined when declines could have been avoided like one common thing is you want to pay off all of your chase balance before applying for another chase card because if you if you owe chase like 1200 bucks and you apply, you're just going to get rejected. As I had someone I told that, they didn't follow the advice and said, oh, my credit score is so high, I can't imagine that they'd reject me. Like, well, they will. No. They will. And <laughs> it's like, I told and, you this is going to with, with with Chase, even, for example, when I used your referral link, I got the instant denial. But I did not worry because I figured I'd call him the next morning the next morning to get um, retention or not retention, but a reconsideration. And I talked to him over the phone and I got approved. Yeah. They probably just had to reallocate some credit limits, right? Between cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, well, they just had to answer some questions about my uh, business. Cause it was a business credit card. Oh, okay. So just some verification. So even easier. Yeah. 
All right. Because yeah, I was willing to move credit around, but I didn't need to. All right. Very good. Anything else to add as we come to a close here? Understand that uh, the credit card hobby is a fantastic thing for you and your family. It can help you travel the world, travel the country, go to these destinations you've always wanted. Avoid Dave Ramsey. Don't use debit cards. <laughs> Don't use cash. Use credit, credit cards. Get those bonuses and use those referral links. Yep. All right. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely, Justin. It was a pleasure being on your show, man. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for future episodes. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read episode transcripts, and schedule a free consultation. Support the show through a subscribe star, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Find the show on many podcast platforms and YouTube, where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me on Subscribestar will give you special perks, including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one discussions, delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to learn about greater Philadelphia travel, credit miles and points meetups I'll be hosting in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, starting January 2023. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life, inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.